Okay, moving on, because we've got LG in, in the Botanic Gardens now, and this is actually, it's one of my favorite poems, strangely enough, and the reason for it is it's, it's very odd. It references the study of botany and Latin love and traditions, and it is a very sort of confused poem, I guess, is, is one way you could describe it. And the reason for that is it's sort of one that appears romantic at first and then really gets quite nihilistic and quite skeptical by the end. It shifts from this romantic view of nature and places it with this very skeptical view. As in someone who is once young and in love and, and free and I guess sort of sees the world from this very romantic perspective, immediately sort of goes into this nihilistic view of what a botanical gardens is. And that, first of all, it's, it's a very pretty place full of lots of very pretty plants. But then it sort of gets to this, this skeptical attitude that it, it's for school children. It's for school children to be bored to death by plants and they walk through the gardens. And it's for botanists and people who have too much time on their hands to, to, to study life, to categorize it, to have these Latin names for things. This idea of botany, all these sorts of things. Now, Slessor, if you look at him sort of biographically, he was one who really didn't have a lot of time for nature. You might consider this to be part of his point of view. In terms of how we look at it, we sort of get this argument that we shouldn't be categorizing it, that we shouldn't be sticking to these old traditions of naming everything and, and having these Latin names, that we should be thinking about, I guess, new ways of engaging with our landscape. We get this romantic view, which is almost shattered by the fact of that we need these traditions, we need to categorize, we need to have these botanical gardens so we can study them and do all the things that we do when we look at plants. It's an argument against institu in institutionalization, I'll get it out in a second, of nature. It uses this Latin imagery of, of Cupid and, and plant naming to, it's a rebellion against authority. And certainly these Latin images, if you think of them in perspective, I mean, Latin was the language of the church, it was the language of authority in England. And it's authority which we sort of brought along with us when we started naming things. And so in order to progress, we sort of got to let go of some of these traditions that we have, and particularly this idea of Latin and these, these images of Cupid, things that have been around since the Roman times when the Romans have conquered England. Then as uh, England evolved, we still sort of kept them. And then when the English came to Australia, we still have them. They haven't quite left us yet. We've got all of these things. And it's almost um, trying to say that we should be mourning this this or we should be saying goodbye to this old ways this old culture and, and it sort of it creates this very pessimistic almost depressing attitude it's sort of a, a sense of hopelessness that we get and particularly the repetition of the of the gardens at the end and the, the name of the gardens sort of really re reinforces that this very pessimistic and and as i said very skeptical view of, of the role of nature and the role of what the botanical gardens do it's the poet agonizing as well over this idea of this lost love. It is this catalyst for a nihilistic turn. The moment he stops talking about the lover is the moment he starts talking about these other things. So you could also insinuate that there is an idea of a lost love in there as well. And certainly it's a very strong catalyst for this turn.